Hello, I'm Mark, and today we're going to look at the question, what is Forms for Excel? So you may be familiar with what Forms is, but you may see this uh, Forms for Excel cropping up in a handful of places. So let's just have a quick look at this. So let's start by looking over at SharePoint, and in here, in this document library, I've got Forms for Excel. And if I go into my OneDrive, again, we've got Forms for Excel. And if I go into Teams, into a File tab, if I go into there, I can create a new Forms for Excel. So what's the difference between Forms for Excel and regular forms? Now, to answer that question, I've asked Kirsty Brand to come and help us out. So let's go and see what she has to say. Thanks, Mark. Welcome. I'm Kirsty Brown, and we're going to have a look at Forms for Excel. So I've have had a couple of people ask me um, numerous times um, with regard to what is the difference between forms in Excel and forms? Pretty good question. I tried to Google it, tried to look for the information, and it went around about of how and what the difference is between both. But it didn't just put it into layman's terms. So let me show you the difference between having and using forms rather than using forms for Excel. So the first thing is, all I'm going to do if I wanted to go and open up forms, as we all know, we can go to Office 365 and we can open up forms. Once we're in forms, what we could do is we could then go to our responses if we wanted to look at our responses of any forms we've created. And then I could click on to open Excel. Now, when I click on to open an Excel, just for this example on the screen, what this is going to do is to open up now all of those results from that particular form and put it into an Excel worksheet, which is fantastic, but it means every time I want to look at those results, I've got to go into Office 365, I've got to find forms, I've got to go into forms, I've got to find then my form, and then what I've got to do then is to go in and look in with an Excel. So let me show you a different way. So what we do have is the opportunity now, if we wanted to, to go and actually use either OneDrive for Business or SharePoint. So all I'm going to do is just go to my particular OneDrive. Now, in my OneDrive, you should see I've got the option of new. Now, we've been used to this. You can create a new Word document. You can create a new Excel worksheet and so forth. But what you will see now is you've got another option called Forms for Excel. So this time, I'm going to click onto Forms for Excel. As soon as I click onto that, it's now going to ask me for an Excel workbook name. So let's just call this, just for argument's sake, for training, test for training, if I could spell, for Forms. So all that's going to do then is rename or give that name of the Excel worksheet. So I'm going to click onto Create. And that's now going to load my new form for me to create. So in this case, I can add new. I can create my choice, text, rating, and so on. So let's just quickly do one just so we can see what happens with our results. So I'm just going to put a yes. And I'm going to put a no in. Now, obviously, I would carry on and add in more and more questions for this particular form. Now, what I could do, though, is I could go, as we all know, I can go into preview and let me just submit a couple of results. So in this case, I've got three results. Now, at the moment, I've got my responses here. Now, again, remember, if I click on to responses, just as we did before, we've got open in Excel. It is slightly different, but I'm not going to open it in this way. The reason being is I'm just going to close that tab down go back into my OneDrive. There is the Excel workbook that we've just labeled called Test for Training for Forms. Let me click onto this, and I can open this at any point. And what this is going to do that is different from us doing it straight from Forms, look at the bottom, look at my sheets. I've still got a normal sheet one, but it now knows that I've got a Form 1. Now, what I can also do, and this is where now you think, OK, it is quicker and easier to use Excel or Forms for Excel. 
if I go to my insert ribbon, you should then see I have forms. And if I select forms now, I can preview my form. So this is now the link back to my form. I may want to edit the form. I may want to change some of the questions. I may want to send the form, which we call share within forms, or I can even delete the form. So I've now got all of these options via Excel for forms. That is only available because I created when I was in my OneDrive or my SharePoint, I physically went in and I said, I want to create a new form for Excel. So the pros really is, yes, you can create a form within Office 365 and yes, you can see those responses, but it is quite a long winded way if you haven't to go and open up that form at any point and look at your responses. Whereas if we do it via OneDrive for Business or do it via SharePoint, we can now create a new form for Excel. We now have this dynamic link between our form and our Excel. I can open up that document, that Excel workbook at any time. And once I'm in there, if I go to my insert ribbon, then I have all of these forms options. So I'm hoping that's made it a little bit more clearer with regard to using forms or forms for Excel. Thank you very much for your time. OK, lovely. Let's have a recap of what we've just learned. So if we go into forms, you can see it on my screen now. In here, I can create a new form. And when I do create a new form, it doesn't ask me whether it's to do with a group or whether it's my form. It just creates a form. Okay, and then to move that into a group, so it's in the right place, I would have to go into all my forms and then click on the, the three little dots and then move it. And then you can see here that I can then move it into one of these uh, Office 365 groups over there. Now, that's, that's fine, but it's just a little bit clunky. What this gives us the opportunity to do is to go to the right location decide where we would like the output of that form to go. So, so the, uh, the Excel version of, of the form. So in this example here, I can go to my team. I can say, I want to create something new, create a new forms for Excel. And I've already created that. You can see I've created um, uh, a form called what is forms for Excel. And now if I go over to uh, forms and then you can see down here, I've got my groups. If I go into that group, you'll see there it is. So two ways of doing it. You can go into forms, create your form, push it into a group, and then go to that location and then surface the, the results in there. Alternatively, you just go to where you want it to be, uh, go through the steps to create a form for Excel, uh, and then it's automatically in the right group. It's in the right place. So for me, I personally prefer the, the way of doing it that uh, Kirsty showed us. I'd just like to wrap up by thanking Kirsty for her time. If you have any questions about what we've covered, feel free to ask them in the comments area.